Okay, so when we start with uh, Land Works for Life, um, people often look at this and think it's it's rather busy. There's quite a lot of uh, buttons here. In fact, there are 84 buttons on screen. Um, but the first thing I want to do is just share a diagram with you. And I'm going to draw this as we go along and see what you think and see if you can relate to this in any way at all. Okay, so one of the first things that happens when I bring out Lamp Words for Life and I show people, I'll often say, can you make the buttons bigger? And I think it's just one of those natural questions. They see lots of buttons. You tend to think, ah, I'll never be able to access that. And what I want to think about is, do you have children who currently use your iPad for YouTube? Or perhaps they use your iPhone and use YouTube or go through your apps. And one of the things about that is I often say, well, actually, I've seen your children using your apps on your iPad or your iPhone. And I'm not concerned about their fine motor skills at this point or their ability to be able to press these size buttons. I'm sure they could do that. So that's the first thing that um, has tried. Uh, there's another question here. It's Lamp only tried with AST of limited verbal means to communicate any research. Okay, Lamp certainly isn't just a system that is used for um, those with autism. In fact, one of the benefits of Lamp is that it's used across people with a wide variety of disabilities. And in fact, I personally have tried that. And like any system, I think it's just good practice to try LAMP. Um, and as I say, I've got a, a, a wide cohort of people with a variety of, uh, uh, sorry, variety of individuals with a variety of different disabilities using LAMP Words for Life. So no, although it was originally designed or thought of to be used by people with autism or individuals with autism, autism that just isn't the case today, certainly not. Okay, so how many of you have done this? You'll certainly try somebody on a vocabulary system and you might start off with just four buttons. Let's make it nice and simple. Again, don't be embarrassed to admit it. I've certainly done similar things. Uh, and then once you've, they've mastered those four simple buttons on screen, what do we typically do? We typically divide the screen up even further and then we'll add even more buttons and we'll say, okay, your four buttons has now gone to eight buttons. Well done, so they start to learn to use that. How many people have done this? Just drop a yes or no into the, into the chat. Okay, so there we go. And once they've mastered this level, we typically then divide their communication boards or their uh, high-tech communication devices into more buttons. And that means we simply add in more keys for them. Okay, it's good to hear that Jane doesn't do that. Um, it's certainly something I've seen done in a lot of schools. And then we go something like this. So that simple four location system has just divided up now as they've learned more into 16 buttons. And we go, OK, well, that's the kind of maximum they can get to. But remember, I mean, essentially, we are now four times bigger than we were before they began. Um, and people will just go on and on and on and do that even further until the point that actually the system becomes a system that looks something, let's just say, like this eventually, and I'm certainly not going to write the numbers in this one, but that system would become something eventually that might become a system like this. So yeah, I start out with full cells, blanked out, so the vocabulary does not move, and that's exactly what we need to be doing, and that's one of the benefits of a system like Lamp Words for Life. It's quite unique in doing that. So. The first thing to, to keep your interest or to arouse your interest, I think, with LAMP Words for Life is that I often use this as my starting point. I almost like the sort of the shock factor, I think, when, when people see this and go, you're going to get my kid to use this, or the adult we're working with is going to use this vocabulary. It's like, absolutely. So I might say, OK, well, give me an idea of how many words you think we should start with. And though they might say, well, we know about the importance of core, uh, and therefore, sorry, I've got two place there, haven't I? Uh, we know about the importance of core, uh, and therefore we're going to use four words we want stop, go, more, and want. I go, okay, well, that's fantastic, but we're not going to put stop, go, more, and want that way. What we are, in fact, going to do, you know, I've got a copy build, uh, sorry, I need to 
make a custom vocabulary, I do apologise. Um, has everybody got a custom vocabulary who is using Lamp Words for Life, or would you like to show me how, would you like me to show you how to make a new vocabulary set? So just thinking, is anybody using their iPad? If you've got yellow padlocks, that simply means that your vocabulary is the standard locked vocabulary. In order to make a new vocabulary, what you need to do is go to menu here in the top corner. Uh, you, there's, there's you go into menu. You create cop. You select copy a vocab. So I'm going to press copy a vocabulary. I'm going to choose which one I want to copy. And in this case, I'm going to copy lamp words for life full. And then I'm just going to type in my name here. So I'll type Mark and I'll type full just so I know which one it is. And I will explain the difference. And I'll press save. And what that will do is make an open version for me. You'll see it's ticked. That's the one I'm in. I'm going to press it and that will load up the vocabulary. So let me explain the difference in a minute between the full and the other versions. But before I do that, I'm just going to go into menu. I'm going to go into the vocab builder, uh, which is one of the most powerful tools within the LAMP Word to Life vocabulary. I'm going to select disable all just to make sure that I've got no other vocabulary in my set. If you have vocabulary and you haven't saved it, please do not press that disable all button. You will lose your vocabulary set. That disable all button uh, allows the vocabulary sets to be clear. And I'll press quick edit. And then what I'll do is just type in the words go, stop, more, and want. There we go. So I've typed in four words. And I'm now going to press save. And I'm going to select. Papers ready. Get your bottle and Nutella. Want me to remember that Get one vital hit that I forgot to do, and I didn't turn on the vocab builder. So you turn on your vocab builder. I apologise, and you select done. And what that will do is just bring up four very important words that we might well start with. So. That's the first thing I want to do, just to keep your interest here. We do have four words on screen, want, go, more, and stop. No, they haven't changed location. No, they're not very big. Um, uh, oh, does somebody have their microphone on? If they do, I don't hear them, but I'm gonna just mute out all microphones there. Make sure that you can't be heard. And I'm just going to check my microphone. There you go. That should be better. Apologies for that. I didn't realize my microphone was in fact on. Okay, uh, oh sorry that I've let, left the microphones on, should I say. Uh, let me just check that here. There you go, that's better. So let's think about that. So, you know, four buttons on screen, I mean, that is a nice, simple system. I wanna overcome some of the other uh, questions that people often give to me. So when I press the word want on here, the first thing people say is, why did that jump? Want. Want. Why did that jump? Yeah. Did you ask that question maybe? Why did it jump? What's all this about? No. Why am I pressing two buttons to say this word? Why did that jump? Yeah. So those are the questions that I often hear. Have you thought those questions? Do you know the answers to those questions? Okay, well, let me tell you just in case you don't. The first thing is, is this is what we call a sequence system or a full system. There is a one hit version of this program. So in other words, what I can do is I can press the word want and it will speak immediately on that one press it will just speak the word want on that one press it would speak the word go more and stop now you might think that is a little easier and it could well be however if you've got 84 buttons on screen and one of those is a clear display and the other one is in fact a spell button that would appear when the vocabulary builder is off. That simply leaves you with 82 words. 
and 82 words just isn't enough. Did you notice, by the way, where my cursor ended up? It ended up on the spell button because that's where I knew spell was based on motor planning and automaticity. So if this was just 84 buttons and each of these were 84 words, this one would be a spell, this would be a clear, and each one of these words would just be a single hit word. I wouldn't be able to say the word eating because it wouldn't give me access to morphology. I wouldn't be able to talk about a particular food that I like, so I couldn't go in and say apple. Let me go into the vocabulary and show you the one hit vocabulary. Don't get me wrong, people do use the one hit vocabulary. However, I seldom find that actually I recommend the one hit vocabulary. The majority of the people I use Lamp Words for Life with and their people of all abilities simply use the sequence version. So here I'll say eat. Eat. I'll say like. Like. I'll say read. Read. I can build a sentence. I. I want. Want. And I'll say read. Read. Here I've got a nice simple sentence. I want read. So a nice, simple, easy sentence to use. However, I can't say book. It's not opening the ability or giving me the ability to say book. And the, often the reason that we do, we do that and we don't say um, words coming off the single hit is if I had, let's say the word apple coming off eat, every time I say apple, the word eat would precede it. So eat apple. What would you like to eat? Eat apple. What do you want to eat? Eat banana. What's your favourite fruit? Eat banana. What don't you like? Eat banana. What do I look like? Eat banana. It would sound very strange, wouldn't it, if we were to say these words in, in, uh, before saying the word that we want to target. So that's one of the downsides of a one hit system. So you might say, well, why do you have it? Well, we have it because there are some people that really just can only use the one hit system. However, there are many people that I have met where we think they can use the one hit system, but very quickly we've been able to move them on. I remember the first time that I worked with John Halloran and John Halloran is the founder for the Centre for AAC and Autism and is also one of the developers and creators of the LAMP uh, approach and LAMP Words for Life. I've worked with John uh, a number of times. I've got a lot of respect for the work that he does. Uh, and I see him and I've um, been on webinars with him as well. Um, and one of the things I remember, if you know John Hamlin, he's quite a jolly character, full of life and full of humor. And I think that certainly in this industry is certainly something that's very welcome. And certainly when I started working with John, I said to him, how long do you find that somebody typically stays on the one hit vocabulary system before transitioning to that next level and John looked at me and said well you know three maybe four maybe even five minutes how is it expecting him to say weeks maybe even months minutes I thought crikey how on earth can that be minutes you know, the very first time I worked with John and went into a school and worked with him, I was able to see that almost immediately. The minute that somebody can make that intentional activation, isolate their finger and make that intentional activation, gives them that ability to be able to do this unique motor movement. You don't look at it as two hits. You look at it as this is the way that you say eat. And you'll notice what I'm actually doing when I do this is I'm pressing this bottom button here. I'm pressing eat and I'm doing this unique motor movement because that is the pattern that is generated. So rather than looking at it and saying, I'm counting the number of hits, what you're doing is you're just saying a nice fluid movement. You're doing this to generate the word eat. So if somebody can press that intentionally very quickly and say the word eat, well, then they can soon transition to that sequence system. So I took John's advice and I've used that advice for the last 10 years that I've known John and, and I'm yet to prove him wrong. I have found many, many children 
and adults that have been able to use that one hit system. And then I've taken that very, very quickly to the sequence system and yes, it's worked. So why would I take them to that sequence system? Well, let's have a look. By taking them to that sequence system, to that full version, mm -hmm. simply means that I can give them 84 times 84 words. You might think that that sounds a lot, and it is. It is in fact 7,056 possibilities, but actually that's not where it ends, because some hits are in fact three hits, and as a maximum number of hits, Lamp Words for Life gives you a maximum number of hits as three. And in fact, if you think about it, there are many systems out there that offer you three hits and three hits that are not easy to achieve. And in fact, four hits, five hits, six hits, seven hits on some of those vocabularies. So we're gonna look at some of those vocabularies today. And we're going to look, does anybody use, uh, we'll use Snap and Core today. Does anybody use Snap and Core? I'm not here to rubbish any system. I'm not here to say that one is any better than the other. But I think to make this a useful and explore Lamp Words for Life, I think it would be useful to compare it with a vocabulary that I think is quite popular, certainly popular here. So nobody's saying they're using Snap and Core. It's either too early in the morning to use it or everybody's just asleep <laughs> or not using it. Oh, OK, well, you use Snap and Core. Fantastic. So let me uh, let me show you LAMP Words for Life sequence. I'm going to show it here um, in full for a moment. So a couple of things I want you to notice. There are some key words here and I'm going to point to the word eat. A lot of people say to me, why have I got the word eat? here. Well, that word eat could be replaced with the word food. If this were your average topic based vocabulary system, this would say food. This here would say drink. This could say TV. This might say fun or like or, uh, fun or jokes. This could say books. And this might well say prepositions. This might say determiners. And so this might say social. Sorry, social. I'm looking at, I'm looking at the right one and pointing to the wrong one. Social. And lastly, this might say family. But when we think about the labels, the labels obviously benefit the individuals if they have literacy skills and they certainly benefit you because you are assuming those that are supporting it are often literate so the fact that way the way in which lamp words for life uses these labels is it says these are those high frequency words that are the most popular words that come from this button it's also the word that you would achieve if you were using the single hit, one hit lamp words for life. However, by pressing this button, and I'm gonna press the apple, notice the device doesn't say anything. However, the word eat can be achieved by a second button by pressing it here. Now notice the location of the word eat, three columns, three rows in. I call that C3, just for this example, C3. So if I press it, eat. eat. Now look what happens when I press the, the button drink. Look at C3. So C3 is this button. Here we have a Mr. Action Man. Look at him, he's off to work. He's singing, he's carrying his bucket. Some people think he's a postman. Some people think he's a bit of an odd jobman. He's there to represent actions. He's off. This is the way that we used to teach the kind of vocabulary in the days where Bruce Baker, the late Bruce Baker, unfortunately, would be teaching this. Um, we, um, we may well teach it using the symbols, but actually I'm not gonna focus on the symbol representation. Look what happens when I press the drink button. C3 becomes the drink. 
There we go. Drink. If I press the bed. Okay, in the bed, we go to sleep. In the bed, I've got my pillow. I've got my blanket. The bed, let's have a press of it. Okay, so I press the bed, and there's the word sleep. The bed represents furniture because it's an item of furniture. You'll notice here, if I go across to the blue adjective button, I go to sleep because I'm, oh, because I'm rather tired. Oh dear. That was a genuine yawn. I think he made me yawn. Okay, we have a lamp in our bedroom. We have other items of furniture in our bedroom. No, we don't have a couch, but it's an item of furniture is the bed. Remember, we have our pillow and our blanket is on our bed and our sheet is on our bed. So we wake up, we go to bed and we rest. Let's pull the cover on. So all these words are associated to that bed. Now we could put them into pages of verbs. We could put them into pages of linen. We could put the word rest into a verb. We could put the word bait, uh, word of, oh my goodness, the word wake into verbs, the word cover into verbs. We could put a towel into laundry. We could put washcloth, washcloth, oh Mark, so early, into, um, into hygiene. I mean, yeah, we could reorganize this and just do it like a page-based system. But I'm saying that this works really nicely. And this allows us to say some of these words in a two-hit system. And it's just a slightly different way of categorizing it. So we're not doing anything odd here. It's just categorizing it a different way. Let's go back to that word drink again. So I press drink. And there I get my verb drink. But look at the adjective, the describing word. I drink because I'm thirsty. Is that not where tired was a minute ago? Absolutely. So the adjective is opening in the same place too. And so is the comparative and the superlative. First year and thirsty ist. I mean, these are words that we seldom use, I'm sure. However, they're there, they stay in the same place. I wonder where I'd get hungry, hungrier and hungriest. Let me find it. Do you think it might be under the eat button? Let's try it. Eat, well I eat, and I eat because I'm hungry, and I get hungrier and hungriest. So it's opening. We also, we're, we're almost anticipating where this is going to open. Here we've got the foods above that look. We have the word food, so there's the noun, and we have the plural, foods. So no doubt, I'm gonna get the noun, if I go back here, Remember, this was our furniture under sleep. There you go. So I get furniture. I can't get furnitures because it isn't a word. Furniture. So therefore, I must get beverage or drink coming off drink here. Yep. I get beverage and beverages. Maybe if I go into the play button here, I'm going to get the verb play. And let's play a game. Oh, this is easy. It's a way to describe the game. Or maybe it's difficult. And I'll press difficult down here. And I get the, ver uh, the adjective difficult, more difficult, and most difficult as a comparative and the superlative. And these are motor patterns that we learn. Again, where would you put difficult if you were using? Let's look for some of those words. I'm going to write some of those words down. And what we can do is we can look for them and use them in other vocabulary systems. So difficult, easy. I'm going to go into my feelings here. So there's my there's my verb feel. I'll press it once and I'll say feel here. At the top, you'll notice I've got some feelings across the top and I can say happy. I can also say sad. I feel sad. That's an adjective. It's a describing word. So I feel sad. Sad. I could say happy, happy in two hits without saying the word feel. OK, so we've got a few words there that we can use. OK, let's turn on our vocabulary builder again. So let's turn it on and say done. And there we have just some very simple words. Want. Want. Go. 
Yeah. More. More. And stop. Stop. You know, one of the things I say when we're first selecting those words, people often ask for words and say, oh, well, he does like his iPad. Um, he does love to eat a cookie. Um, what else does he like? Oh, he's got his favourite toy. Can we make sure we've got that in there? Um, and he likes to watch this movie, but it's a bit scary. So we do have the word scared sometimes in there. And one of the things I often talk about is, OK, remember, this is a vocabulary system. And by using a vocabulary system that we're going to learn to communicate with, I want to give access to those words that really matter. Just think if you went into a French class or you went into another language class, would you want to be taught those words that could help you to build sentences, to learn language, to be used across multiple environments and activities? I could be re-drinking this drink. Oh, that's lovely. Would you like some more? No. Oh yeah, I'll have some more. Wait a minute. Let's say ready, steady, go, and you drink that drink. Yeah. Oh, okay. Tell me when to stop. Stop. Oh, okay, thank goodness for that. Okay, maybe you want. Yeah. Oh, you want the drink. There you go. You have the drink. It depends how we teach these words. And I think one of the important things is that, yes, we can start to have labels and words on our devices that encourage us to ask for things but I tend to find that and agree or disagree with me please that that's more about compliance as opposed to communication let me give you an example of what I mean does anybody use grid player I've certainly seen it being used I've got nothing against grid player it certainly has a place as does every app and in fact we at Liberator in the UK have grid available on our range of accent devices. I'm going to go into Symbol Talker A. Now, as far as I'm aware, and correct me if I'm wrong, there is no way to mask out or hide these words like we do using Vocabulary Builder. But what I might well do is, because of the approach of this, this is laid out nice and simple. So I'll say, OK, let's have ask you, what drink would you like? And I might well go into here, and select drinks for you and you can say okay so do you want coffee well, it's not on there let's assume it was let's say it's hot chocolate hot chocolate okay so it's hot chocolate well first of all, i've had to not be able to say coffee do they think children don't drink coffee my son soon who used to drink coffee when he was little very strange i know he used to like a cup of tea as well OK, so we could add it in, you might be thinking. Yeah, yeah, we could. What would you rather your verbal child would be saying? Let's just think about that. Those first words, those first words that your child was saying when they were first learning to communicate. Want, want it. Or maybe you wanted them to say coffee. Maybe not. Maybe you would have preferred the word want. OK, so now I've got to navigate back. So I've got to hit the back button to go back. And then we go, OK, you've got some food in front of you. And this is how I often see people using this. Imagine that I've got a sandwich and a yogurt in front of me. Say, hey, which food do you want to eat first? Do you want your yogurt? Yogurt. Or do you want your sandwich? Sandwich. Well, first of all, in order to get to yogurt, it wasn't just that one button press, was it? I actually had to press the, the food first and then yogurt. So by teaching somebody that one hit, Yogurt. They're not really learning to say yogurt. It's almost like I've gone like this. Now say yogurt. Yogurt. I've kind of partly got them started with their motor, motor planning or motor patterning. It's not quite right, is it? Plus, again, I mean, how useful is the word yogurt or sandwich? It's certainly not a word that I would say is of high importance. OK, you say, well, what I could teach them is I want. Look, there's not I want down here. That's super useful. Well, it kind of is. What about if I want to say want by itself? I want to learn to use words and understand them by themselves. I don't want to learn a phrase. I want yogurt. OK, give them the yogurt. 
Now, who's going to press the home button? You or them? Okay, I'll press it. So, they haven't pressed the snack button. They've said, I want yogurt. Okay, that really is compliance. Let's go back to the drinks. And because I did the I want, I'm now going to teach you I want a drink as well. So, drink. Oh, look, I want isn't there. Oh, yes, it is. It's here instead. So the location has changed. OK, don't worry. I want. What do you want to drink? Water. OK, let's have some water. OK. Let's have a drink of coffee. What colour's my cup? That's the way often we're asking these questions are rather close. I'm having to press the home button. I'm having to go into colours and I'm having to press red. red. And again, it didn't close. How useful is that? What colour is my cup? You can see what colour it is. It's red. Tell me something about my cup. I like it. It's hot. My mum has one. We have lots. There's lots of useful things I can say that demonstrates a knowledge of this. So the other thing is, where's my I want? It's not there, but I've got it is. And that's because I'm going to say, what colour is this? It is. Yeah. What about if I want to say, what drink is this? It is hot chocolate. I can't say that unless I go into colours, say it is, go it back is. to the home page, go back into drinks and say hot chocolate. Hot chocolate. But it's not hot chocolate, it's coffee, it's just not stored in there. So can you see how they kind of those these kind of systems work? Does it give you an opportunity for creating spontaneous novel utterances? Can I say quick, easy words? Can I say once? Let's have a look. Quick talk. No, there's some phrases there. I'll have to go back. There are some general phrases there, a mistake. Now, help, my shoes hurt. That's really not something I would have expected. I need a rest. I need a rest. I don't need help, I just need to rest. Okay, describing. Okay, well, there's not there. Let me also ask you another question. Honestly, and give me a yes or no here. I'm looking at it is. I'm looking at it is. Is that something that you think as a picture represents it is? I don't think you would look at that in the street and think that's an it is. It looks difficult, doesn't it? OK, so what would we do once somebody's mastered that level? They would go to the next level. And what does that mean? That means that we're going to relearn again because everything's moved around. We've added more buttons, more of the same, and all we're doing is we're relearning where everything is again, because everything has changed location, and we've added more in there. The I want is now where you want is, and the I want is now at the top, and we've got an I don't like in there. We've added a few more drinks in there. And in fact, I might say to you, do you want to eat um, a uh, what would you like to eat? And I'll go to fruit and I'm going to say, oh, peach. I'm going to have a peach. Peach. Now, how many hits was that? I have to go into snacks. One, two, three, peach. four to say peach. Let me go into what flavour water I want. One, two, three. Peach. It's actually easier to say it in, in, in there than it was the other page. Does that make sense? Not really. I want peach water, so I now have to go back. Water. Water. To say peach water is quite difficult. Okay, so that does that help you understand the difference between when I say compliance and communication? Does that help you? You're being very quiet this morning.
it makes me feel that I'm either doing a very thorough job and making it nice and clear, or I'm doing a terrible job and you're bored, silly. Oh, that's perfect. Good. Thank you, Helen. So I'm not here, like I say, to rubbish any system. Okay. So remember, I'm going to go into my menu and I'm going to go into my vocab builder. And I'm now going to go to quick edit and I'm going to type in the word eat. I'm going to type in drink. Okay. And I'll select save. And I'm going to select done. Okay, so what do you want now, Mark? I'll say drink. Oh, yeah, I'll have a drink. Hey, if you want more, more, you can say more. Oh, that's a lovely drink. So, in my classroom environment, when I'm saying to somebody, okay, you've got your food in front of you, okay, let's give you part of that food. Hey, do you want a drink or do you want something to eat first? What would you like first? Eat. Oh, eat. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to eat my chia pudding. And to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you some words that we can learn. Okay, let's look. Well, the word turn is good because we can turn page when we read the book. We can turn round. It's a bit early to do this. In the chair. We can take turns with things. Okay. And what else can we have? We can have in that's a good word and out that's a high frequency word we can have good and we can have bad okay we've got the word want that's nice we've got more we can have play so i'm just adding a few words in here uh that will do i'm going to save that list and select done so here we go we're going to do my eating activity so I might say, okay, what do you want? Should you want something to eat? And I can model. Eat. Or would you like something to drink? Drink. What do you want? Something to eat? Now I'm doing it as if I were talking to you using the device. What do you want? Eat or drink? No, just what I'm not doing is going, hey, do you want to eat? Come on, do you want to eat or do you want to drink? I'm just, do you want to give them time to process it? And they might say, eat. Eat. Brilliant, excellent. We'll have things to eat. Oh no, the lid's stuck. Maybe you can help me. Shall we turn it? Turn. Turn. You ready? You tell me. Turn. Turn. Ready? Steady. Go. Yeah. Now that could be a bit too many times, but turn. Oh, now the lid's off, by the way. I don't know the lid there. Oh. Oh, I think we need some more. Hmm. And they could either say no. Or they could say. Ten. Oh, nearly there. Nearly there. Ten. Ah, we did it. The lid's off. That's brilliant. Now I could start using this and say, okay, now we've got this off. Oh, I've got a mucky spoon now. I've managed to put my coffee spoon onto it. Oh well, I'll just use a cloth here. There you go. So I'll say, okay, shall we get the spoon? No, I'm not going to say that. I say, right, now we've got it. Ah, what can we do now? Should we take some out? Should we take it out? We could take some out. Out. We could put the spoon in. In. What do you think? And get them to say, maybe they say. In. In. Okay, there you go. It's in. Shall I take it out and give you some? Is that what you want? You can tell me to take it out. And I'm going to do a model. Out. out. Look, I'm going to take it out. And I'm going to... Mm, I'm going to eat it. I'm not going to use stir at this point. And I always think about words. Because if I've got turn, turn is fine. How often do you use the word stir? And what I'm thinking about is if I'm going to teach words, I want to teach words that really matter and build up. So stir will come in at a later date. But turn would do the same thing if I was wanting to stir it up. Mmm, that was really, mmm, that was really good. Good. Would you like to try some? Maybe you can see. Eat. Okay, there you go. You eat it. How was that? Was it good? Good. Or was it bad? Bad. You tell me, what do you think? They might say, oh, stop. stop, don't you like it? Oh, well, that's more for me. I think I might eat this instead. Eat. Mm. 
I'm gonna have more of this. No. It was delicious. Oh, absolutely. Mm. That is my breakfast, by the way. In case you're wondering what it is, it is in fact a chia pudding, very tasty. Porridge oats, chia seeds, natural yogurt, some almond milk, and it sets overnight. So, how does that sound? I mean, that activity, is that a great way of doing it? Look how exciting that was. Also, I'm targeting certain words. Can I use these words just in this scenario? Absolutely not. I could read this book. Oh, let's have a look. Kipper got a banana. Wow. Is Kipper having something to eat? Eat. Yeah, look, he's going to have something to eat here. Now, I can see something on the table. There is a bottle. I wonder what's in there. I wonder if it's something he's going to drink. Drink. What do you think? Do you think it's something to eat? Eat. Or do you think it's something to drink? Drink. Yeah, that's right. He's eating and drinking. Let's have a look at this. Oh, there he is. Look, he's up on the stand. He's won himself a medal. Now, a lot of people would put Kipper in their communication device because they can say, who's that? Kipper. No, look, that little boy, he looks very happy. He's done a good job, I think, because he's yes. got a medal. Look how good he's been. Do you think these have been bad? Yes. No, I don't think they've been bad. I think the dog looks like he might be bad. I think he's going to pinch all that food. Bad dog. Yes. Bad dog. Go away, dog. Yeah. Go away from the food. Come on, go away, because that does your dog take the food as well? Yeah, I'm sure he does. Okay, look. Oh, they've been racing. So they've come to the finish line. They've all stopped. Stop. They've all stopped running, and they're having a prize and something to eat. And look, there's the cat up there on the fence. Oh, no, be careful, cat. Hope he doesn't fall down and come all the way down. I wonder whose turn it is to eat next. Ten. Yeah, I wonder who's going to get a medal. I can model really nicely with these words, can't I, using this book? I can model really nicely with these words doing this, doing the eating activity. <gasps> Look, I've got a slinky ready. Steady. Wait for you to say it. Yeah. Yeah, go. Look. Whoa. It fell out. It fell out my hand. That fell out my hand. Should I put it back in my hand again? Should we just put it in my hand? Mm. Okay, ready? In, 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 in. There it is. It's back in my hand. Should we knock it out my hand again? Yeah. Yes, look at that. It's back out. Now watch this. Drink. No, I'm playing with it. Come on. We wouldn't do that, would we? Drink. Oh, drink. Okay, let me put this back for you. Yeah, well, I've got the drink. It's mine. Oh, do you want to drink? Well, you could say... Want. Drink. There you go. You want the drink. That's what you might mean. Perfect. I think that gives you an idea. So we're targeting these words. We're not looking for somebody to communicate straight away. When somebody first gets their communication device, I think there's often a misconception where people think, Mark's got a voice. Mark can start to talk almost immediately. This is fantastic. But actually, that's not. Mark is now going to learn to communicate. And I think that's the key thing here, is that we're going to give Mark the ability to use these words and to understand and learn to use them in context. We have years of being exposed to language before we start to use them verbally. And it's the same with this kind of device. So we have to do activities based around learning. You don't just give somebody a device and so they say, right, now you can say what you want and use it in that way, like we did Grid Player. Okay, so does that, does that help you? Give me a yes or no. Does that help you to see how simple this can be? It's about teaching those key core words and allows you to really open up that opportunity. Now, when you look at it done this way, are there children that you think, actually, I could do this really simply with children and I could do this and I think they could be 
excited by the way that it would be used with them. It's not overwhelming. And actually, it's not overwhelming for me because, hey, you guys need to learn this too. How many times do you think, what would you do if you got into the driving instructor's car and the driving instructor said, okay, off you go. In fact, my daughter, she's 17, I can't believe it. And I took her driving last night and she went out in the car and, and I said, right, okay, come on then, let's give you a go. She's like, oh, I feel really nervous, Dad. I was like, okay, just think. So you need your hands at the 10 to two position. She was like, right, why is it 10 to two? Because it's 10 o'clock and two o'clock. And then what you'll do is you'll feed the steering wheel. You'll feed it. As you turn left and right, you'll feed it. She couldn't do it. I was gonna feed it, Lily, feed it. She couldn't do it. She was taking corners wide. I'm like, Lily, she said, Dad, will you just show me? And I was like, of course I will. So we swapped seats and I got in the car and I showed her how to do it. She's like, that's better. I needed you to show me first. Feed it. Telling me to feed it wasn't any good. You're sitting there doing this. And I was like, it's a valid point. And I'm sitting here and I'm modeling to you. But once I modeled to her, she could then do it. We do that in everyday life. And there's me talking about modeling, modeling, modeling each day. And I sat there with my daughter. I thought, oh, I didn't do a good job. I had to show her that I could do it and how it's done. I then took the corners and showed her how I take those corners properly. I said, look, by feeding it, look what I'm doing. Look how I'm controlling the car. I get it now. And what did she do? A much better job. I didn't throw her into the deep end. You model on two different lamp systems, like as in the CP, ha the CP has a device system and you have another device. Okay, there's two ways of modeling. I would model on somebody's device if that was there. If I'm doing hand over hand, by the way, I never push somebody's hand onto it. What I would do is imagine I've got their hand, I would take their hand to it and I would let them have the tactile feedback. I'd let them press mm. it just so they get that touch feeling, they feel it. And then I would retract my level of prompting by maybe moving my hand around, deep pressure. It could be verbal prompt. And I do over verbal prompt sometimes, so I need to be careful with that. But you know, there was a great video, and I wish I keep meaning to get this video, and I will find it. Um, there was a video, in fact, I wonder if I got it on my phone. There was a young lad that I was working with, and I am allowed to share it because I got photo permission. And his name is James. And when I worked with James, what we did was, uh, I'm just trying to find it. So do excuse me for a moment. When I worked with James, I went into the classroom to help the teacher try and understand how James can better use his talker. And actually, it was an interesting experience because she very quickly kind of assumed she knew what James wanted. But actually, she really, ah, here it is, I think. I've got it. Now, wait, I'm going to try and mirror this if I can. Just excuse me a moment and see if I can mirror it. If I can, even better. This is going to let me first. Let me have a look. One, three, eight, seven. Okay. See if you can see my iPhone now. Oh, look at that. It's mirrored it. So I'm going to turn this up. I'm hoping you can see this. Can you see my phone screen? Okay. Let me explain what is happening here. This is James. Okay, so you should see it now, can't you? You can see a, a picture. No, okay, I'm sorry. Let me try again. Uh, screen sharing. Pause. Now you can see it. Okay, that you should be able to see it now. Yeah, okay, so this is James. And what happened was James was learning to spell. 
So James was pulling off these, uh, these boards here. It's a great way of using his device. Look, he's got Vocabulary Builder turned on, so he's got quite a lot of words there, a lot more words than they were using with him. But listen to how the person, so I was talking to her about using this. She's like, he can't use it during spelling, so I showed them how I would use it in this activity. And remember, I'm not looking for James to say, but watch what happens here, and I'll hopefully you can hear it. So let me open my phone and... I'll do some translation. So he's got the D, he's got the O, and he's got the G. Now she pointed to the device and said, now James, what do you tell me? Now James, she pointed, what do you tell me? Watch it again. Here we go. She's hovering right over him, it's a lot of pressure. She's there, ready to go. And it's really a lot of pressure for him. Here we go. Now, the other thing she's doing is she's anticipating what he's saying. As soon as he pressed the I, she went and said I, and then she's going to tell him the next word. Have? No, 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 no. She was about to say, I have finished. He doesn't want to say, I have finished. He wants to say something different. Good boy. There you go. I want more. Good boy. I was like, oh my goodness, really? Oh, it made me cringe. So I was like, whoa, whoa, okay, follow his lead. He wanted to do more. He was enjoying himself. This was motivating for him to do. So her saying, I forcing him to say, I have finished, which he didn't want to say. And in fact, he went on to do over four more minutes of this. Now, if she forced him to say, I have finished, she was forcing him to say something that he didn't want to say. And therefore, he was using his device in a way that he did to say something he didn't want to say. That would not have been motivating, would it? Does that make sense? It just wouldn't have, you know, okay, say you've finished. Mark, tell me you've finished this course. I haven't. I finished. I didn't want to say that. I didn't want to tell you what I finished now. I was disappointed. In fact, I'm not going to say anything you tell me to say because it makes me feel sad. He could have had that same relationship with the device just because she wanted compliance and that that frustrates me okay so hopefully you can see that as an example okay let me just take this off again and stop mirroring that one and start mirroring this one do you like this mirroring technology it's pretty good isn't it okay here it is there's the mirroring and that's back okay now let me show you the snap and call vocabulary that I wanted to share with you. Uh, in fact, sorry, before I do that, let me just go on and explain one more thing to you about LAMP, which often gets people uh, that I need to explain first. OK, so I'm going to put vocabulary builder on. I'm going to go quick edit and I'm going to use the word feel. I'm going to have happy. I'm going to have sad. I'm going to have easy. I'm going to have the word apple. And by the way, one of the things I'll tell you about LAMP Words for Life is that every word can I, oh, you can still see my phone. Thank you very much for telling me that. Let me just screen share. Thank you very much. And I'm going to go here. There you go. And you should be back on air. Thank you very much. OK, so now you should be able to see my iPad. So if I was doing an activity and I'll say, oh dear, how do you feel? Now I'm going to model, feel, and say, how do you feel? Do you feel happy or sad? <laughs> you feel happy? Oh, that's amazing. Now look how I responded to that. I gave a varied vocal or varied output. Now, if I just go, how do you feel? <laughs> How's Mark feel? 
Sad. Not very motivating. Okay, how do I feel now? Sad. That's right. I feel sad. I feel really sad. I'm kind of just giving it that bit more of an edge. I'm teaching that individual. Okay, some people say, wait a minute. If I'm going to say the word feel, feel, why is that closed down? Has anybody been thinking that? Come on, be honest. Have you been thinking that? I said the word feel, and now I want to say sad or happy. Why did it close down? That just makes more work for me. How do you feel? I want to say I feel happy. But it closed. Why did it close? Is anybody thinking, why did that happen? It's a natural thing to feel if you do. I don't have a cheer pudding while you answer. Oh, these are delicious. Well, let me tell you why it happened. Because the word happy is a unique word. I say happy and I say feel, and they are each unique motor patterns. And don't see it as two buttons. Feel is this. Feel. It's a unique motor pattern. Feel. Feel. Happy is this. Happy. It's a different motor pattern. Happy. Sad. Sad. Is this. Sad. And it's a unique motor pattern. Think about it. People often say, I'm, I've just said eat, why can't I say banana straight away? The, the truth of the matter is, Whenever you say a verb like that, you actually, unless it really is just compliance, you don't say a noun after it. Come on, eat it, eat it. Mmm, I need something to eat. I'm so hungry. Mmm. I love eating this kind of food, don't you? Do you need anything to eat? You look hungry. Everyday speech, we don't say eat cheer pudding, drink coffee. Oh, I fancy a drink. Do you fancy one? Using the word do. This drink is delicious. I have to have a drink first thing in the morning. I have to have a coffee first thing in the morning. I find by having a drink, it wakes me up. Mmm. Okay, guys, it's playtime. Shall we go out and play? Or shall we go and have a drink? Play. Play outside. Play out. Go out. Go play out. I don't need to say playground. Can you see how we use language? I feel that this is a great learning opportunity. Feel that this. I feel rather, rather happy today. The sun's shining. I feel that you're starting to get where I'm coming from. I don't always say a feeling, do I? I do if it's compliance. And I do if you think about forcing that way of feelings. Oh, the word feels associated to feelings. OK, so hopefully that's useful. Now, let me go into snap and call with you. OK, so let's snap and call. OK, so the first thing I want you to notice is this word up here. This is a floating shelf from Ikea. We've all got one of those in our homes, haven't we? The floating shelf from Ikea. Now, that is the word is. But look, if I cover it up, do you think anybody in the street looking at that would know that is the word is? Be honest. Do you think it looks like an is? Look down at the bottom and you've got the word eat and drink. Now, let me just press the word I. Next to is is a picture of a man doing this, I. Now that no longer says the word is, it's changed words, but you can't see the label, can you? What word is it now? It was is, but it's changed. But according to the child that's, ver uh, sorry, that's not literate, do they know it's changed? No, no they don't. In fact, if I just gave you this device right now, you would think if you've been taught that was the word is, would I be right in saying you think it's is? Yeah. Actually, I'm going to press it. Mm. It's the word am. 
And now I've pressed am, and it's another word. It's the word being. Yeah. So that same picture is is, yeah. it's am, and it's being. That's confusing. Now watch this. I'm going to press the eat button at the bottom, and I want you to watch the I. I want you to watch the I next to the is. Eat. Eat. Okay. Do you want to eat or drink? Eat. So that's what I did before. I said, do you want to eat or drink? Okay. Who's going to do it? Me or you? Me. Me. Okay. There you go. Okay. Right. Who's going to do the next one? Me or you? Oh. Wait there. That said me a minute ago. It says I now. What's going on? And that's not right. I'll clear the screen. I have to say eat in order mm. that me comes up. Or I have to now go into the people page and I have to choose one of these for the word me. And which one is it? Which one is me? Is it this one? Mm. That's I. But wait there, I's over here. Why is I there? That's, that's confusing. So where's me? So I go to people. I'll say this one. Me. me. Oh, so me has now changed location and it's changed the picture. That is not a consistent and unique motor pattern. Is that easy? Nope. So I've just used the word me there. Okay, let's go back and I'll clear the screen out again. Let's go to the home page because I, 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 it doesn't go back for me. I have to press a home button. Okay, I've got eat and drink down here and I've got want up here. If I press the actions button to get more, where's my eat and drink gone down here? Oh, it's moved. It's up here. So why is stop moved? Because stop wasn't there a minute ago. If I go back to the home page, that's the stop is here. So it's move location. That's confusing. Okay. How do I get more verbs? Let's go here. Now the verbs are broken down into different categories. Here's computer verbs look. Right. Is that close? Close. It is. So to say close, I had to go here, here. Well, that means nothing. Then I have to go into computer verbs because I open and close a file. And then I have to go here. Close. How do I say closing? I go to word forms. So that's five. And it's one of these buttons. Close. No, it's not that one. That's the same word. So let's try again. One, two, three, four, Close. five, six. Close. No, geez. Uh, one, two, Three. Oh, I pressed the miss hit. Sorry. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, wait there, I made a miss hit. One, two, three, four, five. Close. Six. Yes, I've got it. It only took me 19 hits in total to find it. And I was able to say the word closing. Because word forms are down here. Come on. That is crazy. On lamp words for life. OK, I'm going to introduce the word here. It doesn't matter whether I am closing a file on the computer, whether I am closing the door. It doesn't matter what it is. 
here. One, two, closing. Closing. Hey, let's close. Oh, look. Mm. My sheer pudding. Shall I close? Close. Close it up. Okay. Shall I close the door as well? Close. Now, do you want me to carry on talking or shall I close my mouth? Mm. Close my mouth. Look. Mm. Close. Mm, close my mouth. Can you see the difference? Unique motor pattern here. Less focus mm -hmm. on the symbol and more focus on that unique and consistent motor pattern. Okay, the last example I want to give you is I want to tell you how I'm feeling. Okay, so we're going to go in here. Now, look, this might be quicker. I've cleared the screen, and the reason I cleared the screen was if I've got things open here, and I'll go, okay, how do you feel today? I feel happy. Me. Oh, no, not me. I, I feel. feel. How do you feel? I feel happy. But where do you get feelings from now? Now, before we talked about feelings and how that has those words in there and we get a happy and sad. So we have to look for feelings now. Where do you think feelings might be? Any ideas? Give me some ideas if you think. Where do you think feelings might be? We could go. I mean, we've got descriptions. The faces, where's the faces? This one? Is that the one you mean, Helen? The faces? Okay, so I'll press it again. Yeah. No, it just says feel again. So I'm going to find the description one. Would you have chose that description one other than the label? Would you have looked at that and thought, well, this is something sad, this is a fire, this is a rabbit running? No, you probably wouldn't, but we'll go with it. We'll say description. Okay, now look, we've got some feelings in there. Been a tough one, but we've gone in there. Feel, how do you feel? Well, what does this say? Yeah. I don't want to say good. Doesn't look like there's a happy in there, does there? Nope. So I have to press the home button to go back. So that's four buttons I've pressed so far trying to find it. Where else can I go? Well, there are some topic words here. Let's try that. Any idea where I could go now? This is just a visual thing, isn't it? Are you looking? Look, there's some people, they look rather happy, don't they? They don't look very happy. These look happy. Should we go into that? Okay. Well, they look happy. Well, he looks happy. Let's press it. This is a great party. Ah. This is a great party. Nope, it's not that. Let me go back. So I'm going to go into feelings. Well, there was something else. There's this one here. Let's try this. Ah, this looks pretty good. He looks happy. I'm so happy. No, that says I'm so happy. That's no good. I don't want to say I'm so happy. I just want the word happy by itself. Okay, well, he looks happy. That's for sure. I feel good. He feels good. Okay. Um, there's nobody else that looks happy there. What are these buttons? Well, let's try this one. I don't know what it is. It's going to be... Oh, we're there. He looks happy. Happy. Ah, okay. Was that easy? Let's try that again. So I'll clear it out. One, two, three, four, five, six. Happy. What about happier? I feel happier than you. Because I, I could learn that. Because all I need to know is once I know where happy was, I know I can put happier in the same location or happiest in the same location. And I know that could come up. So how does that work? 
Okay, does that give you a bit of an idea about the difference? Remember, it's maximum, absolute maximum, three hits in Lamp Words for Life. Three, no more. And in fact, if something is three hits, like the word apple, <coughs> and yet apple is something that you find you'd like to eat on a more regular basis, I can copy that button, I can go back into my foods, and I can say, do you know what? You like your apples, don't you? And you eat them on a more regular basis. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put apple as a two hit button for you because I think it's something that you like to eat more frequently. And why should you press three buttons to say it? And that's the beauty of customizing Lamp Words for Life. So, OK, what have I got? Have I got an apple or a banana? Not that I would do it this way. I'm going to press that and I no longer have to go into fruit. I can just say apple. apple. What do you want? Apple. No problem. I can use a button and bring it forward and make it two if it's high frequency. So I call it high frequency fringe vocabulary, your topic based vocabulary you use more often. Put it there, two hits, otherwise leave it at three. But hey, if you could have every single word and it stays in the exact same place forever and ever, you never have to relearn it again. Does that sound like a system that would work? But it also reminds me of something. I know a system where I learn it and I never have to relearn it again. And we call that speech. Because I learned to say a word and I learned to say it a particular way. And once I've learned that skill, that motor pattern stays exactly the same and allows me to articulate that word in exactly the same way each and every day and generalize it across multiple activities and environments. And as soon as I start putting those words together, it means I can communicate with anyone, anytime and anything I want to. So I hope that's been a really useful exploration of the Lamp Words for Life vocabulary. Like I said, I don't want to sit here and rubbish any other vocabulary system. But I think it's important to overcome some of those concerns and some of those myths of complexity. People often say to me, can I turn off the vocab builder? Of course you can. You can turn it off and let all the vocabulary appear at once and that all the words will be there. Anything I've learned stays in exactly the same place. Mm -hmm. What I could also do with this vocabulary builder tool is I can save my lists. So if I save my list here and I call it Mark Starter and save that, I'll turn that vocab builder on. Just save it again, just to be sure, overwrite. Now in the future, if I disable my list and I just say, today we're going to work on colours, Mark. Red, green, yellow, and blue. And I'm going to put some verbs in there. There you go. I'm going to save this list as well and call this one Mark Colours. Now what I can do is now I save that and press OK. And done. There's my colours one that I've just worked on. Mm. And I say, now we've worked on our colours, let's take you back into your old list. Let's go into file list and you'll see mark starter. There it is. Mark starter words. Here, load that file and it takes me back into those words we just had a moment to go. So I can save lots of lists, have lots of different lists for different activities. Not that you would need lots of lists for different activities, but at least you've got that flexibility. There is a question here. Have you experienced having students on the spectrum who prefer to type rather than select keys across different pages? Absolutely. And um, spelling, if somebody has literacy skills, then you're right. Spelling is, in fact, a way they can do this. However, 
one thing to note is that although spelling is a great access and it sorry, or gives me the ability to target any word, what I would do is say, due to efficiency, allow them to use their high frequency words by sequencing because they can be available quicker, two or three button presses, and allow them to explore their fringe vocabulary. So when you go into a classroom environment and you're using, or a teacher is in fact looking and saying, can you find me the word Julius Caesar? Can you find me the word Jupiter? Can you find me the word moon? Rather than trying to navigate through page sets, trying to find those words that soon become superfluous and we rarely use them, maybe that's an opportunity to use that spelling. So personally, I would probably not use spelling for everyday words, but use it for those less frequent words. And if there are words that you're adding in there that are more noun based, then maybe those are opportunities for spelling to keep that spelling and literacy enhanced. I hope that answers the question for you. If you've got any more questions, do feel free to um, drop me an email, mark at liberator.co.uk. Um, we've done really well on time. It is now 9.28, so we've done an hour and a half. I do appreciate you staying on board, and more so I appreciate you coming on this early for some of you, especially in the UK, as it is a public or bank holiday. Thank you very, very much. As ever, it's been an absolute pleasure. I will make this recording available to you, and I'm more than happy to share that. And I look forward to seeing you on a future Liberator training course. I do do um, training courses on LAMP Words for Life features and programming, uh, and that does explore the features and how we program some of these things. So look on our website, liberator.co.uk, to see how to do that. And we also do What is LAMP, which looks at the therapy approach. Have a great day, everybody. No matter whether you're in Singapore or New Zealand, sleep well, have a nice evening. And thank you very, very much for your attendance on this course today. Thank you and stay safe.